Hitchin Bedley's 1976 study is an example of the dual task paradigm. For example, if you're trying to read a letter, you really oughtn't trying to be focused on driving a car, as both these tasks are on the visuospatial sketchpad, and therefore there won't be enough attention to be able to do both properly, resulting in very bad things. However, if you're doing a task where you're reading a letter, for example, whilst doing another task which requires you to listen to auditory information, such as listening to a song, then doing these two tasks at the same time is much, much easier because it's drawing on the visuospatial sketchpad and the phonological loop. Hitchin Bailey's 1976 study shows this to be true in experimental conditions. This was an independent group's design, which means the sample was separated to do one of two conditions. In each of these conditions, people were asked to do two tasks. In condition one, the tasks were as follows. Task one was a reasoning task. Letters were flashed upon a screen, A and B, or B and A, and the participant would be asked a question, like, does A follow B? And would have to answer true or false, depending on the sequence of letters on the screen. This, of course, uses the central executive. The second task the participant would have to do was saying the, 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 in a loop, which draws on the articulatory loop. In condition two, the first task remained the same. It was still a reasoning task where letters were flashed up on a screen and the participants were asked a question where they had to work out whether the answer was true or false. So this, again, was using the central executive. However, the second task was changed to listing digits in a random order. This task still uses the articulatory loop in that you have to remember the digits you've already said to keep the sequence going. However, because you have to pick a new random digit, unconnect the other each time, then the central executive needs to be used for this reasoning aspect. Consequently, in condition two, the central executive was being used in both conditions, which means the attention of the central executive was being split between the two tasks. Now, if the dual task paradigm is correct, then what we would expect to see is that in condition two, the task one reasoning task should be performed at a slower rate whilst people were also doing the task two, which involved a reasoning task. And indeed, this is what we did see. Participants in condition one were able to do task one much more quickly than participants in condition two. So this does support the dual task paradigm.